Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to do a little bit of editing with Goodlight Pack 3. And this is an engagement shoot that I did recently and it was bad light, raining, raining and cloudy and dark. And we almost canceled it, but she had already gotten hair and makeup done, so we just had to go through with it. And one of the biggest questions that we get is how do you edit on bad light days? And especially down here in Florida, we get a lot of that. We don't shoot a lot in the summer, but when we do, it's flat and dark and rainy a lot of times. So I've found that I just love pack three with bad light. Just if you need a little bit of extra pop, I love it. And I've been using it a lot lately and I've shot it a lot of kind of um, dark cloudy days. So I'm going to show my full process on how I edit an engagement shoot. This would be the same with the wedding and uh, same with anything. And I've also done this with film, how I would match film. I'm not going to go through that at all, but this is kind of the same thing that I would do with film um, and how I pick an anchor photo. So I'm going to go through some things and hopefully this helps. Hopefully it's not too long and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing that I do is I pick strong anchor photos that I know that I can use for the full shoot to uh, match my skin tone. So. I'm going to do that first and I use, um, I tag them with uh, seven, uh, which is yellow. So I'm going to go through and pick a few photos. Um, I like that one and I already, um, I already start a few. So I'm going to go through and pick those. And again, like on the beach, it was just, um, just kind of funky flat, like almost like a yellow, a yellow green light that when I'm shooting in, I'm not fully stoked on it, but then um, once I get into the edit, I'm usually a little bit more happy. So this is as shot and um, yeah, I'm shooting on the Panasonic S1R, which I love. It's my favorite setup at this point. And I'm shooting two lenses, the Panasonic 51.4 and the new Sigma 35 1.2, which I love. Okay, so once I have those reference photos, I'm gonna look at them and N, uh, N will bring up the, um, I don't even know what this is called, compare. And I'll look at these. And the main thing that I'm looking for is a good solid um, full length portrait that I have a lot of good um, kind of exposed skin that I can match from. And the second thing is I'm not looking for a, a, a tricky spot in kind of funky light. I want something that's in good even light that I can use to match the full shoot. So I, I like this one a lot. So I'm gonna go in and edit this guy. So make sure auto sync is off. And you guys, I use a Wacom um, pen tablet. I don't know how I could live a day without it. Uh, the first thing that I do a lot of times when I don't know exactly what preset I'm gonna use, I make a virtual copy. And sometimes I'll make multiple, like I'll, I could make five and I might um, go through the full F uh, pack one, F pack. And I might go in and look at those. And since this video is basically gonna be all pack three, that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'll do is I'll basically go in and look at them and I'll get an idea of what I like. And I think that on this one, I'm digging F or E2 and E4. So on the first copy, I'll do E1. And then on the second one, I'll do E4. And just like right away, I love it. Um, I think the magenta is a little bit too high, but that's about it. So I'll go through and I'll look um, at these. Well, actually first I'm gonna edit um, this one to how I think that it should look. So I'm gonna take the greens down a little bit, maybe to about like that, and then cool it down, warm it, yeah, about like that, and then um, brighten it just a just a touch and on a cloudy cloudy dark day like this i usually open up the shadows a little bit maybe like in the 20s um high 20s something around there and then i'll also take the blacks down just a little bit like in the six to ten realm somewhere around there and i'm kind of loving that i don't 
I don't mess with highlights a lot, but, um, cause I like a little bit of poppy, poppy highlights. So I'm not going to mess with that on this one. And then I'll look at the before and after a little bit and I'm okay. I'm liking that. Uh, maybe, maybe about right there. I dig it. I love it before and after. And sometimes I'll look at the side by side. And yeah, I like it. So I'll look at this one now too. Um, kind of do the same thing, warm it up just a touch, maybe open up the shadows a little bit, take the magenta down to maybe about there and something like that. And then, um, yeah, I like it. So, on this shoot, I'm, I'm liking, um, E4, but sometimes I'll go and I'll look at this, them, look at them side by side. And, and again, I could do this with multiple presets and then I'll end up picking one. I like E4. I've been loving E4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and copy all of these settings and I'm going to paste them to that, um, first copy and then I'll, and then I can delete this virtual copy. So that will be my, um, reference photo for the full shoot. Um, the last thing I do before I copy settings is I'll go in and add just a little bit of sharpening. Sometimes I sharpen, sometimes I don't, I don't know. So I'll do sharp medium. And then I'm going to adjust this a little bit and you guys, I'm hitting alt right now to show it in black and white. And that can um, help you to just dial that sharpening in a little bit. And then I'm going to take the masking way up and just, um, about 80. And I like that somewhere about there. And then I love, um, grain medium lately. So we'll go with medium. And again, before and after, and that's it, you guys. I mean, that's all I do on that main photo. And then I'm going to lock this to second window. And this is the biggest thing that has helped me over the years is once I get that main photo done and good that I can use it as a reference, I lock it. It stays in that spot, the whole shoot, whether it's as a wedding engagement, doesn't matter as long as that photo is solid and sometimes I'll get up, I'll walk away, I'll go do something and I'll come back to it just to make sure that I love it. But man, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. So then I'm going to go to the second one and just do the same thing. Oh, shoot. So at this point, I'm going to copy these settings and I don't want white balance and exposure, but I want everything else sharpening, um, grain, I don't want lens corrections. I don't want crop and local adjustments. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to select all. And then I have hotkeys set up on my um, pen tablet for paste settings. So that's what I just did. So now those settings have been pasted throughout the whole shoot. At this point, I'm going to go back into the library module which is E and then I'm going to generate standard previews just so that the catalog loads a little bit faster. Once I get that initial edit in, I want to build previews, um, because it just makes everything go faster. So I'm going to let this go and then, um, I'll come back in just a minute. Okay. Now that that's done and we have previews, what I'm going to do, what I do next is I go back into my, um, my yellows and I'm going to edit, um, each of these, you know, I'm going to show you guys one more thing. This is something that we don't talk about enough, but the amount slider on these profiles. So if you guys don't know, if you haven't, um, used profiles before each one of the good light presets, doesn't matter which one it is all, every one of them basically is linked to a profile. And you've got profile amount up here at the top of the develop panel. And you can take it all the way down, which basically is raw. And you, you in a way have infinite 
um, editing possibilities in some light, I'll end up going up into the, up into the 105, 110 realm, which can look amazing. I mean, it can look like overexposed film. It depends on the light of the day, but that just shows you the flexibility. So again, I, I, I could have showed this when I hadn't messed with sliders at all, but the beauty of these is that you have, um, fully, uh, clean neutral sliders and the profile amount is completely, completely adjustable. So you don't have to go into each individual color because all of this is moving linear, linearly, linear, linearly. Is that even a word? I don't know. Um, the second thing that I'm going to say about profile amounts is that sometimes in, in specific light in some of the presets, if you have a difficult color, that's just not cleaning up and being a little bit funky, you can take that profile down a little bit and that can clean up a little bit of color, um, get things back to neutral. The, the pack three is quite neutral. Um, the, the one thing is it does affect white balance a little bit more. So I tend to end up adding a little bit more magenta, but anyways, I feel like I'm going to end up about 90 and I'm good with that. So that's just a little bit of uh, a word on that. And then I'll go into this second one and same thing, kind of just brighten it up a little bit, take the magenta down, add a little bit of green and then cool it down a little. And I feel like somewhere in there looks about good. So, and then once I have that done, I'll, um, once I have a couple of photos, sometimes I'll go in and I will compare and I'll, I'll take my reference photo and I'll move it around just to see if I have it good. And then also on the keyboard C pulls up compare. And I don't do this all that often because I mean, it's, this is getting really, really specific, but if you need to, um, a lot of times I'll overlap like an arm or a face and I'll pull them side by side just to, just to make sure I'm in that kind of like same, same skin tone. Um, but that looks good. I'll go back to develop and yeah, I mean, you guys, this shoot again, it's just dark. I'm at the uh, ISO 160 just because I was dropping my shutter down too low at times. Like when I was a little bit in the shade. Um, but I'm at a 320th at F 1.2. Um, you guys, that Sigma 35 1.2 is amazing. I don't shoot 35s all that much, but I have really been liking this lens, especially I shoot in four by three on the Panasonic S one R, which I love. And I'm, I'm really digging that 35 and four by three because it's just a little bit wider and it's actually a little bit tighter than a typical 35. So anyways, that's good. I like that. And then this guy, again, this is just, that's before and after just E4, E4 at 90%. And I almost don't even, I don't need to do much on this one. Maybe take the magenta down just a man, maybe about like that. I'm liking that. And, um, sometimes on the beach, if I've got uh, if I want to pull in a little bit of color in the sky, I'll take the highlights down a little bit and, um, maybe about like that looks good. And then sometimes on a flat light day, I'll also take the vibrance up just a touch. Okay. So now that I did that a little bit different there, I'm going to copy those settings to all the beach photos. So I'm going to get, um, well, hold on. Let me do this last one. I think that that looks good. Right about there. Uh, that was our shot. So I'll take this guy up to about, so this is before and after on that one. Take that about there and take the magenta up a little bit. Maybe something like that looks good. Okay. 
Okay, now that I made that change on the in the beach zone with the highlights down a little bit, I'm going to go and select all the beach stuff and again copy this but without white balance and exposure. And I'm going to paste those settings. I'm going to sync all of that, all of the beach, just to um, make sure all that's good. Okay, you guys, the next thing that I do is I go through and I select my uh, reference photos and I'll go through and I'll select all the stuff around it. And again, I have a hotkey set up to do this and this is just going to sync those except I got to go copy. Now I'm going to copy white balance and exposure because now I want to copy that. So I'll paste that to all of these guys. And then I'll go up to the next kind of segment, which is about here and I'll paste that. And then I'll hit, um, find my next yellow and I'll paste that all the way back to the beginning of that segment and then up to here. And then I'll go to the beach and use this guy and paste all the way back to here. And then I'll paste all the way up to, uh, let's see. I think this was all on this side of the pier. And then this was on the opposite side. So I'll sync all those guys right up to there. And you guys, this is the same thing on a wedding day. I mean, if I'm in a getting ready space, I would sync those photos. Um, and then kind of each portrait location I'll sync ceremony, uh, same thing kind of throughout the whole day. I'll just go through and use anchor photos in each one of those segments. And, um, I would do the same thing with film. All right, that's it. So at this point, I'm just going to go through and at this point, I'm just kind of white balancing and, ex and uh, tweaking exposure on all of it. So that looks good. That looks good. Also, I use um, the arrows on my keyboard and I just, I use the Wacom pen again and I just have to hover on what I'm changing and I can just arrow up and down. And then I'll have to use a mouse to click and click and click. And a second tip that I'll give is I edit a lot up in the histogram. So if you didn't know that, it's just a, it's a, it's a big thing to be able to grab onto with a mouse and it just makes it a little bit easier to then um, going to each individual slider. So I use that to adjust exposure up in the histogram. So you can, um, you can move exposure, uh, shadows, blacks, highlights, and whites up there. That's it. And warm this guy up a little bit and maybe take magenta up a touch. Maybe up in there. Darken that up a little bit, warm it up. Good. Got to have that palm tree. So this is just before the engagement started. I just shot around a little bit. All right. So you guys, again, this is just, everything is synced, um, before and after. And all I'm doing now is tweaking white balance and exposure. Kind of cool that one down a little bit, darken it up a little bit. So this is what, well, this is the 35 1.2 at 1.2. I love it. Love it. This is before and after. So I love adding a little bit of grain because it just cleans up um, the skin a little bit. So many of these new lenses are so sharp that a lot of times I don't even want all that detail. Okay. Um, next one, just kind of getting started. You guys, I mean, I'm not doing, I'm basically not doing anything, but changing exposure before, or after, I mean, that's just E4. Shadows opened up a touch, blacks brought down. 
just a tiny bit and um, <clears throat> that's it. Something else that we don't talk about much is matching cameras. Matching cameras can be a complete pain in the butt and it was back in the day big time when um, when I used to use different presets and made my own is it was always a huge challenge to go in and match cameras. Whoops, that was my, that was my yellow. It was always a pain to match and now I just don't have an issue with it. I'm gonna cool that one down a little bit, take the magenta down just a little bit. Good. Good. So now I just don't mind shooting multiple cameras as much because it's just easier to edit. Warm that one up a little bit, add a little bit of magenta. And then if I have a kind of a significant change like that, like I think the light just changed kind of a bit here. So I'll go through and now I'm going to sync all the way up to here again. Done. Did I copy? Yeah. See, it got dark a little bit more. And now I'm still using the 35. Take a little magenta out. I'm going to sync these guys again. Paste. You guys, I don't use the big expensive Wacom tablets. I use the little tiny, like, it's called like the pin and touch. I think it's like a hundred bucks and I could not live a day without it. You mouse people, I don't know how you guys do it. All right, I'm gonna paste these guys right. Sync those ones here. Good. Good. Love this shot. What is this? This is the Panasonic 50. Darken it just a little bit, cool it down just a little bit. Maybe right there. People talk about that Panasonic focus being not good, but man, the live, I love it. I love it. Hasn't let me down. So right here I'm at uh, 250th, so it's not, it's not too dark. 250th, okay. Good, get rid of a little bit of that magenta, cool it down a little bit. I'm gonna paste these guys right here. Um, okay, I'll talk one more tip here. Um, if you guys don't like a lot of saturation, I don't know, most of you probably know this, but you can grab this, um, the dropper and I'm in the saturation panel. So I could take this and I could go over to the blue and I could pull that blue down to desaturate it, or I could pull that blue up to saturate it. So if I did that, I could pull that down just a little bit. Same thing with greens, you could do that with greens, pull the green saturation down just a little bit. I don't do that much, but I um, just a little tip there. All right, same thing here. Uh, good. And maybe I'm going to open those shadows a little bit there. Good. Good before and after. It's a little bright. Cool. The spot is so cool. Before and after. Maybe cool that down just a touch. And I like that. So this is a 35 again. I'm at a 250th. Uh, cool that down a little bit. And you guys, this is it. This is all I do. Same thing with the wedding. Um, piece of cake. There we go. All right, off to the beach. 
man, this whole time I was like, ah, oh, the sun has to come out. I mean, a lot of times I'm just kind of bumming on the light and then I get into the edit and I'm like, okay, no big deal. No big deal. So you guys, I'm not doing anything. I'm not, I'm not even making any changes. So that's why I pick those ones that I can use as a, like a, a to sync. And then that's it. And then on a day like today, the white balance isn't shifting too much. There we go. I'm going to show again the amount. Uh, so E4, this is at 90. I could take it all the way down and then take it all the way up into these crazy realms. Um, I like it at 90 though. Good. Add a little magenta, darken that up a little bit. Highlights good. And then I'm going to paste these guys right there. Same thing. So that's the Panasonic 50 again. And it cooled this down a bit. So this whole time I'm just kind of looking across. I'm looking at this uh, this reference just to get an idea. I don't have to match it exactly, but I want to be uh, close. I'm gonna paste those guys here. Maybe about right there, add a little bit of magenta back in here, warm it up a little bit. About there. There's a before after on that one. Love it. Okay. We're just rolling along. Don't know what happened there. You guys, I'm not doing anything. I feel like this video is like cheat time. The water was so flat and, and crazy. There was a lot of people around us, but um, I think this is a Saturday night. So just shooting pretty tight to keep them, uh, keep them solo. Um, there you go. Not doing anything here. I mean, I'm not even shifting white balance almost at all before and after. Just E4 doing its thing. I mean, if you don't like contrast and stuff, you want to want to flatten that out a little bit, just pull the contrast down. That's um, one of the biggest things that I do. And again, you can, you can uh, adjust that uh, E4. That looks good. Darken that up just a little, maybe there. Same thing. Good, good, good. Uh, take the magenta down just a little bit. Maybe cool this guy down a little bit. About right there. Good. Love it. And then to the opposite side of the pier. So on this one, I don't, I don't do this that often, but I could, you could come in here with a, um, with a, with a brush and maybe darken that sky down a little bit. Um, I don't do it a bunch, but we'll just do this one for fun. Take the exposure down about a third of a stop. Okay. Like that. And then I might copy those guys right there. About like that is good. We darken that one up a touch. Cool. Cool. I love having people run. I don't do it all the time, but when I think about it, I love having a couple run. 
This is at 125th of a second. I can shoot slower, um, but I find that this is about the spot that I like. I, if you shoot about an 80th, it's just going to be kind of a, a little bit of a mess. And people tend to love blur on film. And then what happens is people shoot digital and they just, they, they don't, they keep adjusting ISO to pull in more light. And then they keep shooting at higher and higher shutter speeds. And people think, oh, you only get that blur on film. No, you just need to keep the ISO pretty set and shoot slower and slower shutter speeds. I love seeing movement. Um, I don't need a tack sharp photo all the time. I just love that. Cool. And I'm going to paste those last few and pull the magenta down just a touch. That looks good. And then, so we, we almost left and then we just kept waiting and waiting to see if the sun would pop out a little bit. And it did kind of right there. So I'm going to warm this up a little bit, maybe add a little bit of magenta in there. Maybe about like that. Maybe even pull the highlights down just a touch. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Sink those last few. And uh, yeah, I mean, a rainy, rainy, dark, cloudy day. Um, turning into a, a, a beautiful, a beautiful night. Just watching the sunset go down. I love shooting landscapes for my couples too, especially on a wedding day. Some of the times we get so caught up in the day that I, it's good to just slow down and shoot around. I love giving clients um, just kind of landscape photos that they can frame. And then also, um, if you want to make like a print shop, you'll have uh, <laughs> good photos that you can that you can put in there one day. That's it. And then, um, so we go back, we finish up and we're washing our feet off and stuff, all getting all the sand off at the, at the shower station. I look, I look behind me and I see the sun just putting out these insane, insane sun rays. So I had to go back and grab that last shot and I warm that up and take the magenta down just a little bit, maybe about something like that sailboat way off in the distance. What lens? That's the 35 also. So that's about it, you guys. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show what I do with black and whites too, just to finish this up. You don't have to, if you don't care about black and white, um, then this is about it. But otherwise, I'm gonna show what I do with black and white. I'm not gonna do all of them, but this is what I do, is I go back in the library module because it's faster. It's much faster to scroll in the library module than it is in develop. So what I do to do black and whites is I make them sixes. Uh, I make a, 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 the color label red. So I'll go through and I'll, um, I'll pick the photos that I'm liking to be in black and white. And I'm just going to do a few of them just to show. So I make them six which is red. And then I'm going to skip some of these. Maybe, well, I like uh, that one. I'll go do a few on the beach. Same thing on a wedding day. I'll just go through and I'll, um, I'll, I'll make picks to do black and white. And, uh, it's also a good way to just go back and, and relook at a catalog to make sure everything's looking happy and happy and cohesive. Good. Okay. So I'll take those and then I'll go into my red label. I'll select all and then control or command, I guess, um, apostrophe. I think that's what that is. Don't even know. We'll make virtual copies of all those. And then I'll go and hit edit. If it comes up and I'll invert selection and then I'll hit six again. And now I only have one uh, copy, the second copy of all of those and I'll select all. I'll go back into develop and then I will go into the good light pack two, black and white 
and I'll do the same thing. And I like B1 a lot. Um, and I kind of like B5 on this shoot a lot too. So I'm going to sync settings one more time. I'll hit B5, sync all of these, these guys. And then I'm just going to go through and kind of adjust exposure. And you guys on the black and white pack too, you have the amount slider. Maybe we'll do a video on just the black and white, but the amount slider significantly impacts black and white too. So I'll just tweak these a little bit. Maybe about right there. And I know I'm going quick on this, but we'll make a new video on black and white. Good. 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 And love it. Let's, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, maybe and take the highlights down. Okay. That's it. Then I will get out of the red label and then I have all of these photos all good to go copies. I can hit in again and just make sure everything's cohesive. I don't do this all the time, but sometimes I will go through and select photos and I'll hit N just to make sure, um, everything's pretty cohesive. But if you can see that, I mean, it's like, everything's really close. So I'll go back to the beach, kind of pull in some of those, go to here. Those all look good. If I see an exposure shift quite a bit, I'll go in and I'll change that. But other than that, I think that that looks good. Um, again, this is how I edit on a flat, dark, kind of rainy day. Um, again, I just don't mind it as much. I used to just get bummed out when I had a shoot on a, on a cloudy day and I just don't mind it as much these days. Um, uh, I love pack three. I love E4 lately. I've just been using it a lot and, um, I hope that helps you guys. Um, depending on when you see this, we have a quarantine sale, um, still up on the website. Plus if you use code G L YouTube, that's G L good light YouTube, G L YouTube. You can get 15% off at goodlightpresets.com. And also if you want to bundle a pack, you can use code bundle and you can bundle multiple packs and get 15% off as well. So I hope that helps you guys and, uh, stay safe out there, be healthy and, uh, hopefully you get some shoots that you can uh, test out these presets. So, Talk later.